one more chance to make Uncle Dana happy. Conor McGregor returns to action this Saturday evening, August 20, 2016, hunting for redemption against rival Nate Diaz in the welterweight main event at UFC 202, which takes place inside T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Glover Teixeira and Anthony Johnson will help the pay-per-view, PPV, co-feature attraction, while M. Donald Cerrone takes on Rick Story in a tremendous 170-pound showdown. It's a quality show? But how's the Fox Sports 1 lead in? Let's find out below, see the fight pass portion here, 135 pounds. Cody Garbrandt vs. Taker Mizugaki 3 UFC wins, 2 of them by knockout, set up Team Alpha Males Cody Garbrandt, 9-0, for a blockbuster showdown with fellow top prospect Thomas Almeida in May. No Love made the most of his main event appearance with a brutal first round stoppage of the Muay Thai Menace. Eight of his nine career wins have come by knockout. Three years of alternating wins and losses came to an end in dramatic fashion when Taka Mizugaki, 21-9-2, rattled off five straight wins from 2012 to 2014. Dominic Cruz and Aljamain Sterling handed him the first consecutive losers of his surfer career afterward, although he did manage to stave off the dreaded three-fight losing streak with a decision over George Roop in September 2015. He is seven years older than his favorite opponent. I honestly think Garbrandt is going to have more trouble with Mizugaki than one might think. The Japanese veteran has stood up to bombs from the likes of Francisco Rivera and held his own in the wrestling department against Brian Caraway, while Garbrandt doesn't have Cruz's impeccable transition game or Sterling's overall grappling prowess. He's still probably a bit too much for Mizugaki. Garbrandt's raw power is a major equalizer and Mizugaki's boxing isn't quite crisp enough to fully exploit the lunges of no love. The alpha male trained product does enough damage in exchanges to win a competitive decision. 135 pounds, Raquel Pennington vs. Elizabeth Phillips last September, Raquel Pennington, 7-5, got revenge for her first UFC loss with a second round submission of Jessica Andrade in Las Vegas. Her sole 2016 effort saw her edge a chippy battle with Beta Correa by split decision to raise her UFC record to 4-2. She has submitted three professional foes overall. Elizabeth Phillips, 5-3, appeared to have earned her first UFC victory against Milana Dudva in Macau, only to run afoul of the cards questionably judging. Things went a little more smoothly two Julies ago when she took two rounds from Jessamine Duke at UFC on Fox 16. She has knocked out two opponents and submitted another. Pennington is a fairly dull task for someone who's coming off a year-long layoff, especially considering the stylistic matchup. Both Pennington's striking and wrestling games outstrip Dukes and Phillips is heavily reliant on getting her opponent to the mat. Pennington's defensive grappling and ability to do damage in transition ought to work very well for her. I expect Pennington to simply outscrap Phillips, taking advantage of her layoff to wear her down en route to a unanimous decision. 145 pounds. Chris Avila vs. Artem Lobov Chris Avila, 5-2, an understudy of Cesar Gracie alongside Nate Diaz, enters UFC on a three-fight win streak since a decision loss in his World Series of Fighting, WSOF, debut. All three of those victories have come by stoppage inside of two rounds. He is two inches shorter than Artem Lobov, 11-12-1, but will have an eight-inch reach advantage. Team McGregor's Lobov made the best of his second chance on the Ultimate Fighter, TUF. 22 by rattling off three straight knockouts. He hasn't had the same sort of success in UFC itself, dropping decisions to Ryan Hall and Alex White. He's been stopped just once in the last five years. Zane Simon had a solid breakdown of Avila as part of Bloody Elbow's welcome to the UFC series and I'm inclined to agree with his assessment of Avila as someone trying to be a Diaz without the tools do so. He throws slapping shots reminiscent of Nate's and can throw a good jab, but he doesn't respond well to pressure and can't replicate Nate's trick of keeping his head just a little farther back than his opponent thinks. Those issues combine to severely limit the impact his enormous reach advantage will have against Lobov's brawling. For all the grief Lobov and his little T-Rex arms get, he's a durable and experienced veteran with some real pop in his hands. A just isn't far enough along in his career to maintain the discipline needed to keep Lobov off of him. The Russian hammer hammers his way to his first UFC victory. 135 pounds. Ronda Marcos vs. Courtney Casey upsets of Tisha Torres and Felice Herrig took Ronda Marcos, 6-3, to two of 21 semifinals, where she felt to Rose Namajan's vicious run. She's since gone even, 
2-2, in the UFC itself, most recently defeating Jocelyn Jones Liebarger in June. Half of her wins have come by her barb. Courtney Casey, 5-3, slogged her way to fight of the night bonuses in her first two appearances, competitive decision losses to Joanne Calderwood and Seal Heeham. Cast Iron finally got her first UFC win last month, destroying Christina Stancia with ground and count halfway through the first round. She has knocked out three professional opponents. Casey looked tremendous against Stancia, using her size and strength extraordinarily well. This certainly has me more inclined to pick her than I would have been prior to that fight, but Marcos did very well against another huge bruiser in Jocelyn Jones Liebarger her last time out. If she can again live up to her potential, she has the tools to take out Casey. Marcos has the power and durability to hold her own on the feet and her wrestling ought to tip the scales. Marcos lands enough right hands and spends enough time on top to edge out the decision. UFC 202 features a super fun main event, a possible number one light heavyweight contender eliminator match in the co-feature, and a great fight between two hard-nosed bastards batting third.